Look at this view. Holy. This is the Ha Giang Loop, arguably the most amazing thing to do here in Vietnam. A 350 kilometer plus bike ride where you could see incredible landscapes from jaw dropping mountain backdrops to lush greenery that the north offers. Experience traditional villages, swimming canyons, as well as waterfalls, an endless amount of viewpoints on mountain passes, and most importantly, a place to create everlasting memories with an amazing group of people. Whether you're doing this with a tour group or on your own, the people and the vibes on this loop is simply amazing. The loop could be done anywhere between three to four days or even five. You may do this on your own or with a group. I suggest doing it for four days so you get the full experience and with a group if this is your first time or if you're traveling alone. I went with Jasmine Hostels when I did the loop but there are other tours that I've heard about from other people on the loop such as Bong Hostel, Bees Home and Tours and Cutie Motorbikes just to name a few. So there are plenty of options to choose from. This is the complete guide to the Hajang loop so in this video I'll be talking about what you need to know when doing this loop but before we jump into it hit that like button and subscribe to my YouTube channel to see more travel videos like these in the future and without further ado let's jump right into it. So here are some quick fun facts about Ha Giang Loop. This is the most scenic motorbike ride in Vietnam and probably in all of Southeast Asia. Ha Giang is Vietnam's most northernmost province bordering China. Here you will see some of the country's most rugged and grand landscapes. The climate up here is divided into two distinct seasons, winter aka rainy season and summer season which is the dry season. The best time to go if you're looking for clear skies and dry weather is October to May and winter runs from end of May through September. That said because you are at higher elevations, weather is constantly changing up here in the mountains so it's always good to be prepared. The average altitude of the loop is around 1,000 meters above sea level with some areas reaching over 1,500 meters. There are plenty of mountains and two of the highest peaks are both over 2,400 meters which is around 7,900 feet. Take notes because this is what you need to pack before doing the loop. You need a waterproof day pack or if not at least have a rain cover that you could easily put on. A sunscreen, mosquito repellent, sunglasses, camera, phone, battery charges, a buff or a bandana, a cap, two pairs of shirt for daytime, two pairs of shirts to change into in the evening, a pair of pants and shorts when riding, another pair for nighttime, swimwear, socks, shoes, and flip flops to change into the evening, and of course some pocket money. That's pretty much it for the basics and some of you may add a bit more or less depending on who you are but essentially just remember to not pack heavy as you won't need much. There are several ATMs in the Hajang area where you start off the tour and a few more on day one as you ride throughout the day but the deeper you get into the loop there won't be any ATMs available so be sure to get enough cash with you for the duration of the loop. Now probably the most commonly asked question is an international license necessary. Ideally it's better if you have your international license especially if you're doing the loop on your own. Some tour groups even require proof that you have your international license otherwise they won't accept you to do the tour. And there are some, I'm not gonna name who, <coughs> Jasmine Hostel, where an international license is not required to do the loop as they have a way to bypass it. There are police checkpoints on the road and if you get pulled over and you don't have your license you could get seriously fined. I'm not sure how much the fine is but you don't want to have issues with any sort of authority at a foreign country. On top of that when I did the loop we passed through seven police checkpoints. There could be more, there could be less depending on when you go but that's how much we came across. So every tour is different but many tours typically include a local guide or multiple guides for the group. The semi-automatic motorbike is included and just as a side note this is not a scooter that is automatic that you rent in most parts of Vietnam or all of Southeast Asia. It's semi-automatic meaning you got to learn how to shift the gears up and down. Bigger bikes are available for an additional cost. If you don't feel comfortable doing this or don't have experience riding any sort of two wheels I highly suggest going on the back of an easy rider. An easy rider is basically your personal driver for the entire loop. You just sit at the back and enjoy the views. The motorbike insurance is also included but not a personal travel insurance. This should be on you. Three meals a day, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and any other bevies like soda or liquor is not included but the food they serve up is delicious. The accommodation is also included. It's typically a dorm type of vibe and is shared with other riders so just be aware of that. Private rooms are available but at an extra cost. The entrance tickets for all the sites you visit like the waterfall and the river is also included and the fuel for the entire loop as well as the Hajan permit fee is included. Some tours will also include a pickup at Hanoi if need be but personally I just headed straight to Hajan as I was making my way up north anyways but this is an option as it's a common place for many who are doing the loop. Depending on which tour you go with prices may vary but not by a lot. On an average if you're doing a four day tour three nights which I recommend you're looking at about four million Vietnamese dong or 165 US dollars or 230 Canadian dollars or 151 euros. The three day two night is about three million Vietnamese dong which is 125 US dollars, 171 Canadian dollars or 100 
113 euros. Both prices are if you were to ride on your own. If you're thinking of hopping on an easy rider, it will cost you an additional 1 million Vietnamese dong, which is an additional 42 US dollars, 57 Canadian dollars, and 38 euros. If you're looking to do a bus ticket or upgrade to a bigger size motorbike, then those are obviously additional costs. Even though your food, accommodation, and fuel is covered when you go with a tour group, depending on who you are, any additional bevies, treats, tips, souvenirs, and so forth would have to come out of your own pocket. So it's good to carry anywhere between 1 to 3 million Vietnamese dong, that's roughly around 41 to 124 US dollars, 57 to 171 Canadian dollars, or 37 to 113 euros. The next part of the video is where I take you through the itinerary, and I'll be talking about the four days, three nights tour, but if you're doing a three days, two nights, then you can forget about the last day, as the third day, you're obviously riding back to Haja, where you started. Keep in mind that I did the loop with Jasmine Hostel, so this is their itinerary, but it's not much different than any other tours out there, as everyone does the same route, it's just one big loop anyway. So day one, you'd start your day with some breakfast and orientation to give you an idea of what to expect in the next coming days. This is also a time where you could rent shin guards and elbow pads if needed at an additional cost, and if you are doing this with an easy rider, this is also a time you would meet them. If you're doing the loop on your own, then this is where you sign off on a bike, do a quick test ride to get familiar with the gears and all that, then once all checks out, you would be put into groups. There are a total of 7 police checkpoints as I mentioned, more or less on the loop, and the first one is in the city of Hajang itself. So for the ones with no international driver's license, they had to hop on an easy rider's motorbike just to get past the first one, and yep, yeah, that included myself. One of the perks of going with Jasmine Hostels is that they know where the checkpoints are, and what they do is they send one of their guides first to see if there's a police working at the checkpoint, and then they give a signal to the group if we're good to go ahead or wait for a bit. Or in this case, go off the beaten path to avoid the checkpoint. Once you get going, you'll be going through Quan Ba, witnessing the beauty of Baksam Pass, Heaven's Gate. It's a nice scenery, but just know that the views will get better as the days go on, but this gives you a little sneak peek of what's about to come. Then as midday hits, you'll be having lunch in Tam San Town. After a top tier lunch, you'll continue riding to Lung Khoi Cave, and from here, you're going to make your way to a small town called Yen Min, where you'll be staying for the night. And once you get settled in, this is where they'll serve up dinner, give you quote unquote happy water, and have a karaoke sesh as you wind down the night, but don't expect it to last throughout the night as they have a cut of time at 11 p.m. because everyone's gonna have to get up bright and early to do another full day six to seven hour ride. Hoping that you got a good night's rest and the locals giving you happy water on the first night didn't get to you too much, you'll be having breakfast before you check out of Yenmin to hit the road for another full day of riding. This is the day where the beauty of the landscape starts to show. The first stop you'll be making is in the iconic Tham Ma Pass viewpoint. Because this is a popular stop, there will be a lot of other riders here, a few markets to get souvenirs, and some Hmong locals that live in the area. This spot is between Yen Min and Dong Van. From there, your next stop is Pass House, the Royal Palace, inside a valley of Sa Pain, where the wealthiest and the most powerful family of Dong Van resided in the early 20th century. Then at this point, you're actually getting closer to the Chinese border. In fact, the next pit stop is Lung Kao Flag Tower, which is just about 10 kilometers away from the Chinese border. This tower stands at over 30 meters, and this gigantic flag of Vietnam is about 54 square meters. This tower is an essential symbol in Vietnam, as it was used to mark the northernmost point of the country and serve as an important location for protecting the territory during the French colonial period. The viewpoint also offers panoramic views of the landscape that borders China and Vietnam. Depending on if there's security manning the border, you may get close to the fence of the border, but in our case, someone was at this spot so we couldn't get close to it unfortunately. Also, if you're thinking of climbing the border for some reason, don't. It's just about past midday at this point and you'll be having lunch once again. Delicious food is served up and then you're back on the road in no time for the final stop of the day before you end up at the place you're staying for the night. The next stop is Ma Pi Leng Skywalk. I suggest going up all the way to the top from here because you get a much nicer view of the landscape and it's actually less quieter as everyone is down below soaking in the views from there. It's an additional 15 to 30 minute technical climb but it is so worth it. Ma Pi Leng Pass is considered to be one of the most majestic route of the loop and definitely the most beautiful path of the road of happiness. If you're lucky enough you could catch the sun going down from here. After another full day of riding and adventuring you will be heading to Pavi Village where you'll be staying for the night. And just like the first evening, you'll be having dinner here, having happy water, and because this is the last night for anyone who signed up for the three day tour, there's a little going away party for them. And yes, there's a hard stop at 11 p.m. once again. If you decided to do the three day tour, which I don't suggest, this is your last day and you're going to be parting ways halfway through the day with a group who's doing the four day tour as they continue on to the next day and the three day goers going back to Hajan. You're once again having breakfast at the place you're in, then you'll be checking out to head out to your first destination, the Noke River. Go on a boat ride down to Tucson Canyon where you could just hang out and take a dip in the deepest canyon in all of Southeast Asia that runs about 
100 meters deep. You'll spend about a good hour and a bit here, then you'll be back on the road. As a side note, the roads you'll come across on this day is not that developed yet, so they are very, very dusty and not paved. If it is raining, then I'm sure it will be muddy and slippery on these parts, so just be prepared for that if you do come here during the rainy season. A bandana or a buffer would be handy to cover your nose and mouth while riding, and of course, a raincoat if it does rain. Once you get through that part, the roads do get better, but first you'll be having lunch, and after lunch, you're gonna be saying goodbyes to the three-day riders as they head back to Haya. Before you head to Dugia, where you'll be staying for the night, you're gonna catch the sunset at one of the most iconic spots in the loop, the Long Ho viewpoint. You can see layers and layers of mountains here that looks like a painting. Words and these visuals don't do justice to what it's like seeing this in real life. It is very, very surreal. And just as you catch the sun going down here, Dugia is not too far away from where you'll be staying for the night. And yep, you guessed it. There's dinner and more happy water being served up here. And yes, there's another party happening since it's officially the last night for everyone. You'll be having breakfast once again to start the day and you're back on the road. Your first stop is Dugia Waterfall where you'll have a chance to jump off a cliff, take a dip, or just chill. Dugia is a quiet town and it has that very soothing feel to it, which is actually really nice. From here, you'll be riding to Langtan Village. It's known to be a traditional craft village of brocade weaving by the Hmong people. The main material for weaving is flax fibers and all phases are done by hand. The people that live here believe that the linens used connects people in a spiritual world. You'll be spending about an hour or two here having lunch at Tamsun Town once again where you had your lunch the first day before you make it to Hajang around 3 to 4 p.m. And congrats, you have successfully completed the loop. For anyone who finishes the loop with Jasmine Hostels, you'll be receiving a t-shirt which is pretty well known for anyone backpacking across Southeast Asia. And that is the complete itinerary of the loop. But before I end this video, here are additional tips that will come in handy when you do this loop. If you have never ridden a motorbike before, I suggest you go with an easy rider. Though the loop offers the most beautiful and scenic roads ever, it is also one of the most dangerous roads as it has narrow, winding roads and the different terrains mixed with the unpredictable weather conditions. Accidents are prone to happen at any given corner. In addition, watch your speed, it's not a race. Besides, it's better if you go slow so you can soak in the beautiful views around you, so why even go fast? Ideally, it is better to get your international driver's license and many tours require you to have it, otherwise they won't accept you to do the tour. But there are tour agencies, as I mentioned, who will let you ride as they've got a system in place so that you won't have to deal with police checkpoints along the loop. When I did the loop, there were about seven that we came across. If you are doing this on your own, then you must get an international license. If you're planning on doing this loop on your own or with someone or with your own crew and don't like the crowds, going counterclockwise, the opposite route of the itinerary I just mentioned in this video, you will find less tourists going this way as most tour groups and people just in general do the loop clockwise. This obviously is based on personal preference, but hear me out for a second. If you're riding in a group, ride at the back of the pack. The middle is not a good choice because, well, it's the middle. There's riders in front of you and behind you. It just feels restricted, if that even makes sense. Riding at the front may be cool but there's still someone in front of you who is your tour guide as they are there to lead you the entire loop which still feels constricted. Now the back, it's the prime spot. Yes the entire group is in front of you but you have the power to slow down so that you could have more space in front of you without feeling the pressure from anyone behind you so that you have to speed up when in the middle or having slowed down at the front of the pack but your tour guide in front of you would instantly slow down once he sees you lagging behind. And so go to the back for freedom and luxury of space it offers. If you are a morning person like myself and want a break from the pack, most tour groups start their day with breakfast at 8am and you don't actually leave between 8.30 to 9am or maybe even shortly after that. So get up around 5 or 6am then ride out to catch a sunrise somewhere if the weather permits. Just make sure you park your bike the night before in the accommodation you're staying at where you could easily access the bike and bring it out in the morning. Think layers, pieces that you could wear over another. Avoid thick fabrics as they take up a lot of space and no matter what season as mentioned, always bring a raincoat. The Haja Loop is a gorgeous ride that is worth exploring. The narrow, winding, cliffside roads up here are notoriously dangerous and as odd as this sounds, it's what makes this exciting and thrilling. In addition, it is also one of the most scenic drives hands down. If you really truly want to experience the lush greenery and jaw-dropping landscapes of the northern part of Vietnam, then this is a must-add to your bucket list. And that's it for this video, but before you go, subscribe to my channel to see more travel videos like these. Give this video a big thumbs up and don't forget to share it so that the YouTube algorithm bumps up this video for other viewers to see it just like you who are looking for tips when doing the Hajan. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.